Hey everybody, Pete, how's it going? Welcome to this new episode of Stock Trading for Beginners. A little bit of an impromptu call today. Uh, what we're gonna discuss, the market's been a little bit challenging recently to say the least. Uh, just despite the fact that we made all time highs, it's been uh, frustrating for short term traders. We've been kind of flip flopping from one day to the next. It's been hard to have conviction. And a lot of traders kind of feel like they're getting bounced around. Uh, and that's what we're going to address today. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the difference between succeeding and failing in anything you do, but especially in the markets, is how you deal with adversity and how you adjust your position sizing when the market is really clear and flying off your fingertips and how you adjust your position sizing down when the market's a little bit tougher and you're in more of a cash flow mode than uh, looking to build longer term positions. Um, so what we're going to do today is interesting. I'm going to give you a 10 minute, 12 minute clip of our game plan meeting from just this Friday. So just two days ago, uh, we have these meetings every single day. Most of the game plans are about what stocks we're looking at and all of that kind of stuff, right? But uh, my job, my responsibility, my mission every day is to help give you the right mindset going into the market. So if you happen to be behind the curtain and in the boot camp with us, which, gosh, I really hope you, you are or you choose to be, click down and learn about that. Um, this is just a tiny sample of what I give to you every day. And if you don't know my background, I had two trading firms in New York City. We had over 300 people trading. And I would give these kind of pep talks, motivational talks, whatever you want to call it, uh, every single day. Because you need to go into the market knowing exactly how to think, exactly what you plan to do, whether it's a day trade or a swing trade. The mindset is everything. Because look, let's face it, understanding how to read the charts and all that kind of stuff is exciting. Uh, and it makes you feel like you know what you're doing. But here's the thing. There's a big difference between making money and reading charts. And that's what I specialize in. So enjoy this clip of our game plan meeting. And if you have any questions or you want to learn more about it, definitely click down and learn about the boot camp. I really hope to see you on the other side. Uh, it's basically a 30 day all out seminar where we have interaction like this every single day. If you find this kind of stuff valuable as well, give us a thumbs up, click down and subscribe and leave a comment too. I'll speak to you soon. So we're going to start out, we're going to jump over into uh, watching the spiders and, and obviously how the spy relates to everything. Um, I posted it yesterday afternoon, just want to touch on it again here this morning. Uh, if we drop in here, the most uh, common moving averages right now, we're looking at the 20 and the 50. This is how strong the market has been. So I just want to make sure that we all have context. Uh, again, we just made all time highs on Wednesday. So the world is not collapsing. Have the circumstances changed? Yes, 100%. But now we're in kind of a little bit more of a normal mode where the market's going back and forth, which is why I described short selling and started to initiate short selling into the conversation about a month ago. I started to see the tea leaves a little bit. You read behind the scenes, you read all the different news stories that are populating in here. Um, and I think, it's, I think that we're going to continue to discuss short selling because I think there's going to be some opportunities uh, to be had. Um, and just again, just for full context, the reason I'm not going all in on short selling because yesterday would have been an easier day to put short sales on. Um, it's confusing, quite honestly. It's it's not the easiest thing in the world to wrap your head around. Um, I, I was very um, uh, transparent with everybody that when I first started learning about short selling, which was literally right out of the gate because I had to, that I started at the end of the dot-com boom. So stocks were mostly going down and you needed to understand short selling to make any money. Um, it is confusing. It's confusing to understand selling something you don't own yet and then buying it back later and the process of, and I'll just use this as an example, short selling it at 398, expecting the price to go down and then covering it at 392. So for those of you that are new to trading or even short selling, if you short sell at 398 and it goes down to 392 and you cover it back at 392, the difference between the two is $6. So you, on the short sale, if it moves in your favor, which means if it moves down, you're making money on the difference between the entry and the exit. The only difference between this, instead of buying at 392 and selling at 398 and making the difference where you're starting the trade down here and exiting the trade up there, you're starting the trade up here and exiting it down here. 
So there are pluses and minuses. Um, I would strongly suggest newer members only short sell during the day to get comfortable with it, to get your repetitions in, uh, and do not carry overnight shorts until you really fully understand uh, all of the um, components and ramifications of short selling. So if anybody has any questions about short selling, obviously we've been discussing short selling now for about a month. Uh, absolutely bring it up in Monday night's coaching call. Again, those are the places to uh, ask about short selling. Um, I, I know newer members want to um, learn during market hours and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, but especially the first two hours of the day, we need to focus on trading and not teaching new concepts during that time of the day. So the coaching calls are really 100% the time to do that because we can really do it in a kind of uh, laid back manner. So I just wanted to bring that up. You can see clearly we're well above even the 20 period moving average, never mind pulling all the way back this deep. Uh, so hopefully we have reasonable trade ideas today. Um, but keeping the short selling idea, the short selling concept in uh, in our mindset today, if there are some day trading short sale opportunities, I'll call them out. There are not textbook, not many textbook short sales where the all of the order flow is pointing down. There's some, uh, but not perfect across the board. So really what ideas I'll be looking for for short selling today, if the market rolls over today outside of the opening range, we'll be looking for stocks that are well offered on the daily, hopefully well offered on the weekly, and then go down to the opening price and the current hour candlestick to look for some opportunities and maybe even get some repetitions in on calling out short sales. I know quite a few members were asking for more practice, which I get 100%, and we will do that as a community. So um, also touching base on some of the longer term trades we've made, which are swing trades. If you happen to not catch it yesterday, um, I mentioned several times that I've cut back on my position sizing for obvious reasons. The swing trades we've had, I think most of the swing trades that we've had in the last two weeks have actually been profitable after entering them. Uh, but the, for whatever reason, the gaps, uh, the, not so much the gaps, the breakouts haven't been following through. I think GM is really a great example of that, um, where we broke out and pulled back and then broke out again. And it looked amazing yesterday. I think at this, I think some, at some point we're up like $1,100 on this trade looking for really big follow through. And it's thankfully bouncing again this morning. Um, but a good example here of the breakout, instead of this breakout just continuing to go five days in our favor, um, it did not. So again, something that's really interesting, um, this breakout, and, and this needs to be said and needs to be taught, needs to be learned, needs to be understood. Look at this breakout here where it, you know, it goes from 46 to 58 beautifully. It never really comes back. And this breakout here, and even this one. So I, I want to drill into everybody's mindset that we have to take the trades that match the strategy. Like we can't get upset. We can't get um, disappointed um, because some of them don't follow through because literally the same stock just about a month ago did exactly what we would want it to do and traded cleanly up through a breakout. This one happened to have not. I mean, triple triple top usually flies through. Maybe today we'll get some follow through. Um, but I just want to make sure that everybody look. I, I get it. Losing trades suck. I'm not. I mean, anybody who says they don't is you know not not actually trading. <laughs> They're probably just um, paper trading or not trading at all. Uh, I am trading, so you know I, I feel it just as much as everybody else. Uh, to say I don't feel it would be lying. Of course I do. I don't like any trades to move against me, but. In the long run, which is what we're all trading for, the long run, um, everything balances out as long as you manage the downside and, and capitalize on bigger trades. So again, uh, um, I just want everybody to make sure that they're not like panicking or anything like that because some of some of your trades are getting more challenging. Some of the opportunities are, are not following through. It's a part of the market. It's literally a part of what we do. And I think that this is a great illustration here of this breakout just ran $12 and this this one hasn't done much yet. It's, it's the same setup. Conditions might be a little bit different, but it's the same setup. So that's really quote unquote proof um, that we really have no idea which trades are going to follow through. We can only just put our put the odds together and um, look for the hold the ones that follow through and the ones that don't, they don't. So does everybody understand that? Like I, I, I really feel strongly that 
uh, it's part of my mission to teach everybody the mindset of trading just as much as, and maybe even more so than the technical setups, because I really believe everybody in our community has the capacity to make reliable money over the year. It's just that we have to make sure that running a business isn't, you know, cherries and rainbows every day. <laughs> there's no other way to put it. I mean, I know that there's some members of our community that are entrepreneurs and fully understand that, you know, some days are awesome and you're like, yeah, being an entrepreneur is the greatest thing ever. It was the best decision I ever made. And, you know, and then two days later, it could be like, my God, why didn't I stay in school and become an accountant? <laughs> you know, we all go through that, but it's, it's, it's those who persevere um, when it's not perfect and those who treat it like a profession when it is, those are the traders and the people that, you know, kind of live those dreams that everybody talks about because you can handle a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of it not being perfect because you're thinking long term and you're constantly tweaking it to get to the point where you're like, all right, I don't need to tweak the strategy. I need to tweak how I'm viewing it. So uh, I, I, I wanted to start today out and I'll keep doing it because if I if I have any superpower, I don't know if everybody knows, but like I'm a really big comic book fanatic. Uh, if I have any superpower, it's persistence. It's um, I just refuse to believe there is a, there's something I can't do if I put my mind to it, whether it's trading, entrepreneurship, or you know anything along those lines. Um, it really comes down to how bad do you want it? You know, can can you get up when you get knocked down? And I'm it's funny. Like I'm having this conversation. Like the market sold off five thousand points yesterday, um, but I'm really more reacting to the angst that I feel from everybody. And I completely understand it, but I want you to know this is this is a part of trading. And as long as we keep our risk manageable and on the opposite side of that, as long as we understand when good trades are unfolding, uh, not to book profits too quickly because we maybe had a tough day or two in the market. Um, holding those winners is really what's going to separate you from everybody else who gives this a try and just says, oh, I tried the I tried the bull flag. It doesn't work. Trading trading stinks. Nobody makes money trading. I'm telling you straight up, I know million dollar traders. It's not a question of whether or not it's possible. Um, it's a question of um, it's a question of do you treat this like a skill and like a profession, which is going to have ups and downs and everything in between and, and just refuse to take no for an answer. That's that's really what it comes down to. And again, my superpower is persistence. I learned it a long time ago. I learned it. I don't, you know, I learned it from Napoleon Hill and Tony Robbins and everybody else that you could think of that, you know, is personal development type person. And if you read every single story about somebody who's massively successful, you got to read the notes where where they struggled until they finally turned the corner. And I really feel I can help everybody turn the corner quicker. We just have to make sure that we we have the right mindset. And I think we do. Honestly, I think we do. I I feel blessed to be to have everybody here in our community. Um, I just want I also feel a responsibility to make sure that I point it out every day um, that this is a journey that we're on and the market. It's unrealistic to think the market's just going to go up every single day. And as long as we manage the downside and learn how to make more on the upside, we're going to be more than fine. We're going to be in great shape. And that's what our community is all about. And that's that's why we're all here together to take that journey together. So